Jamie from Inky and Scrappy sharing with you today my craft roulette challenge number 213. Hello, Featherhead. I've wanted to do feathers on the Cluck Yes stamp set forever. So I did finish up my Cluck Yes stamp set series, I want to say two weeks ago, and this was one that I didn't get to, was adding feathers to her. So, of course, when it came up as mixed media, that was my first thought. I'm bringing in feathers to my feather friend. So I kind of drew out my sketch for this one. Well, I was watching the show. I was not in an actual creating mood, but sometimes sketching it out and kind of, I had the whole idea in my head figured out before I actually sat down to do this one, which is not my normal make routine. So it was kind of fun to do some more sketching. I did stamp this one with some intense black ink from Hero Arts, which is alcohol marker friendly. And then I'm bringing in my, one of my favorite color combos. It's like a reddish brown for my chickens. So it's kind of like a Rhode Island, Rhode Island red pen or whatever. I have a couple, I think I have some bluffs that are like a reddish, light, definitely more on the lighter reddish tones or reddish brown tones. But all in all, it's, you know, they're just very pretty chickens in real life. So I've colored this one multiple times, so I kind of knew what I was getting into and doing and how I've colored it in the past. I did extend down her, I guess, her neck or body a little bit more just because I knew I was going to need a little bit more height on my image for the layout that I had in, in mind. So I do come in with the darkest and then the medium tone, and then I'm just coming back in with the lightest tone here. And of course I'm cheating and using the big end. And then I went out of the line. So I was like, okay, I better flip it and use the bullet nib. I did miss that top point part. So usually I color darkest to lightest, but like on the top part there, I just went in with the lightest, colored it, and then brought in my middle tone and added it to the size to kind of give it a little bit more dimension. So now to pick out my colors, I kind of pulled out, you know, some, what I was thinking, robust to me is very dark, bold, and vibrant colors. So I kind of stuck with some deeper greens, of course, that rich brown red, and then I did bring in my colored feather bag of feathers um, that I have in my stash and kind of pulled some colors from there. I liked the rich purples in there and then of course the pinks and so that was kind of where I went I wanted to do some deeper darker tones I did keep the coloring fairly simple I kind of went with two color blends and went that route I didn't always pick the right marker I was just kind of grabbing and going and if it didn't work well you know that's why we go over it with another color and we call it good. The joy of alcohol markers, they usually tend to blend if you go over them. So I did bring in my deepest, darkest, like, it's like a fuchsia, I don't know, is it a fuchsia purple? I don't know. Pinky purple, and just kind of color it out on the side. So this one I did hand cut. I didn't run it through the brother scan and cut like I normally do. So you will see how I'm cheating. Sometimes I don't like fussy cutting at all and there's a way to wiggle around it especially when you have those like little fussy pieces around the flowers on the head i'll show you what i did later to kind of conceal that so for my background here i'm bringing in a piece of that mixed media cardstock from um strather one yeah i wanted to say bristol smooth but i knew that's not what it was so <laughs> I did some seedless preserve, smushed it on my glass mat, added a little bit of water, and then kind of smushed it on here. Um, This is some new to me paper. I like it for some other mixed media things. This one, I didn't get the look I was really going for. Maybe I used too much water. Maybe I, I don't know. I didn't dry it in between either, so it kind of blends a little bit more than actually sitting on top. But overall... You know, I just really needed the color behind there. So I went and looked through my stencils. I was thinking I had a feather one somewhere and I could not find it. Now I brought in some Nouveau Crackle Paste here. It is dry, like super dry. Like you see how I'm spreading. It's like spreading cold butter 
onto a piece of wood. Yeah, I'll liken it to that. Um, I tried saving it, and then when I got all done with my card, I was like, you know, I don't use my paste nearly enough. And so if you're looking at getting paste, get one that's like multi-purpose and that you'll use a lot. Like in a small enough container that it won't dry up before you're done using it. This is my problem. So I did kind of work that in there. I tried putting some water on it. I really was hoping it would, but ultimately I just decided to chuck it in the trash. I knew, I, I don't play with it a lot, so I think I've maybe gotten four cards out of that one, which is sad, but it also flaked off a lot when it dried, so I, that was the deciding factor on it going bye-bye. So I did find, I kind of go through my, you know, I look at my background, look at the color, and I'm like, mm, I can go on my color chart and pick out a marker that's very similar to my background color, and then I just color in the white, because yeah, I didn't want to fussy cut it all. <laughs> That's what I call cheating. But it works really well, especially if, you know, you have those little itty bitty pieces and I didn't want any white on this one. So it worked, it worked well. This cream feather was like the softest and fluffiest feather ever. And so of course it had to go on the top, like a little fluffy crown above her head. And so I had planned on kind of like putting her in a bed of feathers, but I just didn't I don't know. They just weren't doing what I wanted them to do. So I ended up just kind of abandoning that ship and doing something else. Well, of course, if you saw my original sketch, I kind of had like flowers or whatever hanging down. That was just because that's what I had in a stencil that I could make it work. But I knew I was going to use feathers. So I kind of took my feathers and kind of laid them out in that same kind of swag I guess it's called a swag swag pattern and I liked the purple but I really didn't like it on the background I thought it was too bright for or too dark for the purple tones that I had in the background and so ultimately I just decided to go with the pink ones with the little you know blackish brown tips and so then I had the pink polka dots and I just kind of went that route isn't that little feather the, just the cutest little thing? Yeah, it was adorable. Anyway, so of course it had to go in the middle. So I'm adding that one, and then I put a acrylic block on it. I, it probably would have been fine to leave it on there with the glue, but I was afraid it was going to stick, and then it would pull up. So I did kind of pat it dry a little bit, and then let it dry. I did run, I did find a, I think this one is a Lawn Fawn Sentiment, banner here. I just ink blended over the top with that seedless preserve and then I just brought in the crushed, is it crushed velvet? Victorian velvet. There we go. Victorian velvet for the backside because I knew that it was going to show a little bit when it was folded. So I just kind of hit those spots. Nothing spectacular. It was, you know, just Filling in a little bit of color there, you could definitely go with your alcohol markers and color that in as well if that's, you know, or pattern paper or color paper would have worked. I think this sentiment is from a Hero Arts kit. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's where this one came from. So I die cut that out with some sparkly cream colored cardstock and then some sparkly brown colored cardstock. It's scrap from, I don't know when. You know. Yeah. So I decided my chicken head needed to get popped up here. And then, of course, I knew I was going to tuck her behind the feathers there. So I wasn't worried about the white space on the bottom. And then I will add the hello here on top of the banner. I kind of bowed it a little bit. So when it's actually sitting there, it does kind of have a nice bow to it. And so this way it wasn't fighting the paper. And then of course I brought in some glossy accents to cover the eyes. And of course, all of my pictures were done before they were all the way dry. So they're nice and clear now that it's all the way dry. So before I finished, I decided I needed to finish the inside of my card. So I went with cluck yeah, and then I see you chicken me out. And then, of course, that little 
chicken head that's like reaching in from the side is probably my favorite for insides of all of my chicken parts that I've been doing. Yeah, I just think it's hilarious. It's like, oh, I see you there. Be naughty. So I'm stamping this one with that Victorian velvet. And then I'm going to remove those stamps and then bring in that I See You Chicken Me Out stamp. And I'm going to stamp that one with the Seedless Preserve. It just kind of adds. A, I could overlay it on top of the Cluck Yeah. And it, you know, it kind of sticks out a little bit as well. And then before I adhere my still wet card front onto my card base, I'm going to set this into my stamping platform that has my new to me uh, back, you know, made by stamps on it. Um, I need to clean it off next time before I do it because, yes, I had some ink transfer there. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not worried about it this time. So I'm going to add some glue onto the front of my card base here. And I did apply this while it was still wet. I probably should have waited for it to dry. It warped a little. Anyways. All right, my craft roulette parameters. So it is a hello card or a greeting, I guess, whatever. Um, my robust colors, I brought in bright, bold purples and deep pinks. And then of course those brown, rich brown tones kind of a scream of robust to me. Um, workplace. Well, if you're a chicken tender, <clears throat> I have chickens, so I'm a chicken tender. Anyways, that's one of my workplaces. So the chicken is like the farm, which is a workplace. And my mixed media, I tried. So distress oxide background with a crackle mousse that was too dry over the top it's probably all gonna flake off in the mail but whatever and I brought in feathers because I've wanted to put feathers on this chicken for a while now and of course glossy accents and of course a hoo hoo alcohol markers for coloring my actual image so I think I hit all four parameters anyways there we are bye Make sure to go check out Craft Roulette and hopefully you get some inspiration to keep getting inky.